Hi, I'm Miko Neiman with Century 21 Hometown Realty. Hi, I'm April Hugh. I'm with Century 21 Hometown Realty. And today we have Michelle Hornberger from the local Allstate Insurance Office. Thanks for having me. Yes, welcome. welcome. Thanks. It's exciting. <laughs> so we just wanted to ask you some basic questions. Uh, when you, um, a buyer purchases a home and they call you to get a hazard insurance policy, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So... A customer can start as early as when they're shopping. Okay. They don't even have to wait till they put in an offer. We'll quote for them okay. um, using some, what we can find in the MLS, um, use those um, specs for the home and get them a, a quote so they would have an idea on what that would cost. Now, does that include, is that like a standard policy or is it an upgraded policy or fire and, and okay. earthquake? So we write homeowners policy, landlord policies, condo policies, flood policies, and earthquake policies. Okay, so that's a, quite, a, quite a spectrum there. So yes, so it all depends on how the dwelling is occupied and who is occupying it determines the kind of policy that it needs. Okay, and so, and you've been doing this for how long, Michelle? 15 years. Okay, okay so you know it, you, yeah. <laughs> So now, if it's a, a typical, say, uh, a purchaser looking for a single family property, mm -hmm. um, or say a condo maybe mm -hmm. even, um, now do those change quite dramatically since one's covered under an HOA versus just a single family? Okay, so a single family home, um, there's two options. There's what's called a DP policy or dwelling policy, and there's a thing called an HO policy, which is a package policy, far more inclusive. So a DP policy is everything has to be added by endorsement. So it's like buying at the buffet. You want this coverage, you want this coverage, you want this coverage. It's very restricting in case you accidentally don't have the right coverage for your particular kind of claim. Where an HO policy, especially what we write, is an HO5. It's all inclusive. Everything's covered unless it's excluded. Flood and earthquake okay. are is, examples right, of that. Right. Okay. That's an extra cost. That would be an extra right. cost. It's an extra policy. Okay. And um, a condominium policy depends on how the CCNRs are written by the HOA mm -hmm. for how much coverage someone needs. So condo policies tend to be written two ways, whether the master policy is going to build the entire unit except for upgrades or the outside shell and not any interior. Okay. So, so that's what you call walls in. Walls in. Walls okay. in. So if it was walls in and you didn't know that and you didn't buy your own condo policy, the master policy is going to build you a box but no closets, no cabinetry, no potties, no showers. Okay, gotcha. Right. So no kitchen. In, no, yeah, no, no kitchen. No cabinetry, no kitchen. All right. Yeah. So it's um, at my agency, we always ask for a copy of the CCNRs so we can read th through that with you so you understand what your master policy would cover and then what your policy through us at Allstate would cover. Okay, great. Now, do you. Um, for say buyers out there looking and do you pull credit for buyers just california does not pull credit okay okay well, do so they other states do other states okay do. Oh, okay does not. okay yeah interesting okay. yeah that's just a state by state okay. rule california does not take any kind of credit into consideration okay previous claim history couldn't can be an, uh, something that is taken into Okay. Well, yes. that would make sense if you've had multiple um, insurance claims and you flood and flood and flood and flood, yeah. and then you might not be so inclined to accept them. Correct. Right? So what about one flood and it was repaired or, you know, everything was remediated and all that. Um, now, is that a, a big ding uh, for... The so let's break that into two parts. Okay. So if you were the home seller and you had a claim mm -hmm. on your home and I'm your new purchaser coming in to buy a new policy because I'm buying your home, mm -hmm. your previous claim is not going to hurt me. However, oh. 
depending upon the type of claim, if it's a fire or a flood, new company may want to make sure those repairs were made and ask for invoices. Why is, you know, why it's a good idea to start as early in the escrow process while we still have contact with the seller. So if it was my water claim and I'm purchasing a new home, that water claim may not follow me because that happened in this home and it might not affect my new purchase theft claim would be different. So it's kind of a case by case. Now what about, it, for an example, like on a, uh, a vacant home mm -hmm. and someone breaks in and vandalizes it, is that covered? Do I own the home yet or not? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> the owner. If I owned the home, I need to have a vacancy endorsement on my home to make sure that claim is covered. What What does okay. the vacancy endorsement cover? Like, okay, you, you've moved out, okay. and we know you've moved out. Okay. So I moved out. I still own the home, and because I bought a new property, and I haven't sold my home here. We haven't closed escrow. Right. right. So okay. that home is vacant. I need to have told my current insured, you know, my pol current policy that that home is vacant. And get a fa vacancy endorsement. Vacancy endorsement. Okay. So if someone comes in and vandalizes and takes all the light fixtures and, and um, we've known, had claims where they've come in and taken all the copper. Oh, oh. yeah, because copper is so oh, expensive. Right. Now, right. 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 And so if you don't have a vacancy endorsement, that vandalism might not be covered. Wow. That's, you know what, I honestly, that's good information, Michelle, because yeah. that happens a lot when there's mm -hmm. a house that's empty for a couple of days in the interim or what mm -hmm. have you, and it's a yep. good- You just never know. That's, that's, like, that's great information, so. So when you yeah. have a customer that has auto and home and this kind of cup, uh -huh. then obviously they get a nice little discount, oh, right? Bundle discount, yeah, tw yeah. Up, like tw up to 20%. It's, it's a good, and it's on both sides. Oh, that's great, that's great. So, yeah, yeah it's oh, all perfect, great. perfect. So are there any hot tips that you can tell us about the insurance business? Well, one thing that is, um, I learned a new term from you guys this week, and it's the accessory door. Oh, units. yes, yeah. That you guys, and I was like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> who, who has an accessory to their home? <laughs> so in insurance world, we call that um, a detached structure. Okay. Um, okay. Off, usually on a policy, it looks like dwelling extension. So that is actually something that's often confused. So. We want to know, um, it, is it a garage or is it actually like a guest house? And how would that guest house be used? Is it, is it for guests or maybe an art studio or maybe a home office? So if that's the case, it's still owner occupied and would be covered under your homeowner's policy. Okay. But if you have that little um, casita and you have a tenant in it, or an adult child, or even your mother-in-law, then it's not on your homeowner's policy. It needs its own policy, um, like a landlord policy. Okay, so like it's a separate entity? Separate so, contract. Okay. So like a landlord policy, and they would need a renter's impo insurance then, policy. Then the person, wow. because okay. the personal property, because the home's not owner-occupied, mm -hmm. a homeowner's policy is all about owner occupied and that then wouldn't be owner occupied even if it's a family member even if they're not paying rent you want to make sure it's properly covered you need to fully explain that to your agent so they can help you because you don't want a coverage issue at claim time you want to make sure you've got the right contract for that little casita okay now that which brings me to uh a question about permits uh -huh. now are you um does all is it, are you seeing more of stricter rules with the permitting if the, if the structure is permitted or not permitted, like say a patio room? That or, is a, that you don't look at anything that like that, right? Um, really affect us at all. Okay. Interesting. Well, I, okay. So every company is different then. Right. Because yeah. Okay. I, I ran up into a situation where oh. a company would, would only permit or uh, provide insurance temporarily until they permitted a patio room that was, huh. yeah. What it was attached to the house. It was attached to the house. Huh. Okay, um, anyway. it could be just a quirky thing for that particular company. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so I just 
Do you know For that sure. was like a general scenario now of things are just kind of getting a little bit more tight? No, sometimes it claims we have to get permits to redo repair damage, especially if they're extensive. Sense, you yes. might have to pull permits for that, but not insurability. Okay. So, <laughs> so with the, um, all the fires we've had over the last few years here in California, how, do you, how has that impacted your business? Yeah, our you know, perpetual fires that we, we've had, we, it's, they're almost year round now. It has affected premium, you know, as they, you know, as all the companies manage risk as well as pay claims, it has affected premiums for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so are, so certain areas a little bit more uh, expensive, expensive or not covered because of these? There are some fire prone areas in California where insurance companies are very conservative on taking on new business where you will find it's harder to write a policy in some areas. That is true. But there is California Fair Plan that was created in um, 1968. So in the, event. in the event you can't, there is always the safety net of California Fair Plan. It's not a nice HO5 policy. It's very limited in what it's going to cover, but at least you can get coverage if you decide to put your home, you know, have a home on the coast or in the forest. Gotcha. Are you seeing that people are being dropped at all? Um, well, this last year, California Department of Insurance, government agency, put some stops in place so a company after um, a catastrophic event cannot drop someone for at least one whole renewal from the time of the disaster. Mm -hmm. So that has helped people, at least they at least they have time to figure it out. Okay. okay. Wow. I'm gonna ask you a separate question uh -huh. though. So let's say somebody has a, um, a flood in their home. Say, say the, the water, um, the ice cube line. The water line <laughs> right, I couldn't say it. <laughs> ice, <laughs> ice maker line, <laughs> there it is. It breaks and floods the kitchen. Right. Call you right away. Yes, please. Call you right away. Okay. Shut the, of course, shut the water off. That's always and, helpful. And then an adjuster, I know. <laughs> Do you know that I walked in on a house that was just remodeled and the ice maker line was just spewing water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We just, we just had, had evicted the tenants and cleaned the whole house up. So this is yeah. a sad day. Yeah. Water lines, whether they are big or little. Water in your house is never a good time or a convenient thing. But you could then send the adjuster out right away, so it... So adjuster's probably not the first, you know, plumber. You get, we got to get yeah. the leak stopped. Right. And then, you know, there's water mitigation companies. We need to get it drying yes. out. Um, and then we can help you, um, you know, there are several companies locally that we can call, get the fans blowing, get yes. as much, because we want to stop the loss. Yes. and um, mold sets in so quickly. Mm -hmm. Like like Serve Pro, like you get someone like that. Exactly, a, like Serve Pro, Service Master, mm -hmm. Oliveras, there's there's several. SCI out of the Pomo area for going north. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of good companies. Very good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> good. So. so I think we um, talked about the um, stricter regulations mm -hmm. and all of that. So... Um, and yeah, any and advice that you yeah. would give to a buyer? So one advice I would have to someone who hasn't ever bought their first home mm -hmm. is if they're renting is to get a renter's policy because yes. we offer a um, continuous policy discount. So even if they're going from renters to a homeowners, it's a nice savings, okay. you know, yeah, to for a little bit. And plus yeah. they would have that coverage that they really do need on their personal property now while they're getting into their new home it's well worth it and then you know you really can't ask us too many questions we really do want you to know and understand your policy and how coverage works and um you know kind of talk you through how a claim process works and you know we want you to understand so please keep asking questions that's helps you understand better now, are you doing um, face to face right now, or is it totally phone call, or is it Zoom, or a lot of Zoom? A lot of Zoom. Um, 
uh, I will oftentimes come out if a customer, you know, is existing with us and they have a question. Sometimes I'll come outside and just chat with you out mm -hmm. there. If I can do that, that's super helpful. A lot of phone conversations, mostly phone, mm -hmm. um, Zoom, just to keep customers safe because we have a lot of elderly clients and um, they've been doing such a good job sheltering in place and then they come into us and now right. we expose them. All our spouses and adult kids are working and... Right, you if, just never know. If you've been doing a good job, we hate to give you, <laughs> expose you to some germs. That's, yeah. that, that's great. Very good. Well, well thank you so much yeah. for all. Thanks for having me. So great and informative. We really yeah. appreciate thanks. it. Yeah, thanks for it taking the time. Great time coming. Thanks. If yeah. you'd like more information, just drop us a note or make a comment and we'll get back to you right away. And um, as always, this is Miko. You can reach me at 805-714-8124. And you can reach me, April, at 805-878-5056. Thanks, thanks for watching. See you soon.